you are a former Scientologist. Tell us, how did you first get involved in Scientology? Well, I was raised Catholic. Um, I'm from Nebraska, from a family of 10 kids. And um, when I was 13, I know. <laughs> when I was 13, uh, my brother, who was 19, died in a car accident. And after the funeral, I heard people say God chose him. He was ready to be with God. And that, at that point, I said, well, not fair, God. I'm, I, I'm going to look elsewhere. And so I started a spiritual journey then. I just have to say, I've heard it over time, many times, you know, God took a person because he needed them more than the earth. Uh, there's nothing scriptural that, that even remotely resembles that. Sometimes, unfortunately, life happens, and I don't believe that it means God took them because he needed right. them in heaven. I just right. believe that unfortunate things do happen. But sometimes we don't know what to say at the moment of loss. Absolutely. And that, for me, made me spiritually search. I was studying crystals, meditation. I even went to a place where you speak in tongues. And I just pretended, but I wanted to <laughs> feel like I belonged. Some of us pretend, too. I wanted to belong to a group. I wanted to feel a part of a group. And I was, I was young. I was in my early 20s. And I stepped into a group that said, hey, you're awesome. You can do this. They actually tell, tell you that this is the only hope for mankind kind and, and to help the planet. I wanted to help and improve my life. So this was the right thing for me. But then they dangled this carrot of spiritual freedom. Who doesn't want that? But it wasn't free. Now tell me about this. I understand you had to spend $45,000 in one night. Tell me the story of that. Let me paint the picture for it. So I'm in a room and there's people and these people are nice. They're, they're bringing me coffee and cookies and telling me about what they're doing to help the planet and what my contribution will do to help across the world. And I believed in this, but I just had my daughter and I needed to breastfeed her and I needed to leave the room. But instead they brought my daughter to me. I breastfed her and then they took her out of the room, and I was so tired, you guys, you can't understand, and, and new mom, and I wrote a check for $46,000, and I got to leave the room at that point, but I thought I was helping. I thought this contribution. In, in, in total, what would you estimate you gave? I know I gave $983,000. Wow. $983,000. I get a lump in my throat when it comes out of my mouth, but it's the, it's the, it's the truth. It was over time. Um, but I, I, like I said, I wasn't stupid. I, I believed I was helping. So let me ask you this. Was there a last straw that caused you to say, you know what, this is unhealthy for me and I need to get out. I need to make a change. What was that moment? I was, I was starting to get disheartened and kind of shunned by my own group of people because you're very insulated in Scientology. But when they tried to recruit my daughter into the Sea Organization at a very young age... How? Uh, she was nine years old, and I said, she's off limits, you guys, just leave her alone. You can't join the Sea Org until you're 18, but you can, if your parents are okay with it, you can sign over. And I said, you know something? How long uh, is that contract? A billion years. No, 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 this is... The contract to join the Sea Org is a billion-year contract. A literal, like, it's, no, you, in, it's with written... With a B, not with a No, M. no, it's written in there. And from that point when you made your decision, what was the process like? Um, How long did it take? Don't mess with my kid. I wasn't ready for that. I know that's right. Don't miss. And, and I, I, had, I, was, I had already lost my home. I was on food stamps. I, wow. I told her, I, I said, honey, I'm done. But it took me another five years to get out because the, I was so insulated. Dentists, doctors, agents, managers, all were Scientologists. And, and, you know, they, of course, disconnected with me. They could no longer talk to me. You said you consider yourself lucky. Now... You've got more optimism than most people to be like, I lost $986,000 and I'm so lucky. Like, uh, how do you consider no, yourself I, lucky <laughs> even through what you've walked through? Tell us. Well, it's like I paid my own ransom, right? So, yeah. I, I think I'm pretty lucky. I have my daughter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have my health. I tell you the only thing I just, I have to make mention of this because this is the thing that I, I struggle with constantly. They took almost two decades of my life. Wow. They, that, I, I was in my early 20s. I'm middle-aged now. I, I, you can't get that time back. Million dollars, whatever. Money is not everything. It's the time that I missed. Wow. So that upsets me more. I, I, I believe God has the power to restore the years uh, that were lost, not just mm -hmm. for you, but many people who are watching have wasted years of their life. Uh, but it ain't over till God says it's over. And you know God is still in my life. That's right.